All right, so for metric conversion um, is our lesson three. So the lesson objectives for today are for you to be able to convert between units of measurement and convert between Celsius and the Kelvin temperature scale. These will be things that we'll be using primarily when we're, we're working with math figures in, in our data and also in lab. So the metric system is a system of measurement that's used in science and in most other countries. Um, the U.S. has what's called the imperial system, um, but most other countries use the metric system. And so the, the nice thing about the metric system is it's all based on the number 10. Um, and we have different, different wording for it and different prefixes. Um, using the metric system is something I think most of you are probably familiar with. You've done it in other science classes in the past. Um, the base units of measurement um, are found in reference table D, which looks like this. Um, the ones I really want to, you to make sure you pay attention to, at least for, for the time being, um, is this one here, meter, okay, in gram, and then down here with liter. So meter has a symbol M, okay, and it's a unit for measuring length. Gram has a symbol G, and it's a unit for measuring mass. And then liter down here... Uh, has a capital letter L, okay, and it's a unit that's used for measuring volume. You can see here there's things like molarity, which we'll talk about later, a mole, um, Kelvin we'll actually talk about today as well, um, but these are all different types of, of units that are um, standard base units. So prefixes then, when you combine a prefix and a base unit, gives us our our amount. So a prefix is used to modify the base units of measurement, again found on reference table C. So this table is reference table C. You can see that our factor 10 to the third is a kilo, 10 to the minus 1 is a deci, 10 to the minus 2 is centi, 10 to the minus 3 is milli. These are the ones that we'll probably use the most often. Um, and you can see how that's symbolized here. K for kilo, D for deci, C for centi, and M for milli. Those are all lowercase as well. So these prefixes are equal to the number of base units. So an example here is one kilogram. Uh, so that would be abbreviated kg. That's 10 to the third grams. Again, when we use this number 10 to the third, that's um, like a scientific notation. So we would add three zeros after it or move the decimal point three times uh, to get our amount. Okay, same thing with the negative. That means we move to the left positive exponent as we move to the right. So here I have an example uh, conversion. So I want to convert 10.02 kilometers to meters. So I'm going to take, I'm trying to do this, set it up in, in a process called dimensional analysis. And, um, you know, I know that in the past when you guys have done conversions, you've moved the decimal point to the left or to the right by a certain number of places. And that's totally okay. You can certainly do that. The way that I'm going to show you here, though, is setting you up for when we get into um, other math things in this class using a, a process called dimensional analysis. So we take our starting amount that's given to us in the problem, 10.02 km. It's important to write out the units when we are doing this process. The equal amount is the thing coming from our table in reference table C. Okay, So we know that um, kilo is is 10 to the third, right? So an equal amount is 10 to the third meters is equal to 1 km. So 1 kilometer is equal 10 to the third meters. This is our conversion factor, is, is what this is called in this process of dimensional analysis. Okay, now the reason why we wanted our units written out is so that we can go ahead and cancel them when we do our math. So we multiply the top numbers together and we divide by whatever numbers are on the bottom. In this case, it's very easy because our bottom number is just 1, and there's no other numbers there. So we take 10.02 times 10 to the third, and we get our end amount, 10,020 meters. Again, in the past, what you could have done is just look, oh, I need to change the decimal point three places, move it over 1, 2, 3, and there you go. You can, again, that's super easy and, and efficient. You can do that. This process of dimensional analysis is something that we're going to continually go back to um, this school year. Okay. Another one, uh, 45.50 milliliters to liters. Okay. So again, I'm going to start with what I know, what's given to me in the problem, 45.50 milliliters. I'm going to use my conversion factor. So I look down here, um, milli, right, is 10 to the negative third. 
So I know that there's 10 to the negative third liters for every one milliliter. I wrote it in this way so that my units cancel, milliliters cancel. I'm left with the unit liters, that's what I want. So I multiply the top, 45.50 times 10 to the negative third, and divide by whatever number I have on the bottom. In this case, it's 1. So my answer becomes 0 0.0450 liters. Again, that's the dimensional analysis way. You could certainly go up here to the top, move your decimal point 1, 2, 3, add a placeholder 0 in there, and you arrive at the same answer. Both of those processes would be correct. One more example here, we have 502.3 kilojoules to joules. Start with what you know, 502.3 kilojoules. I look at the prefix kilo. I know that my factor is 10 to the third, so I know that there's 10 to the third joules for every one kilojoule. I cross off my units, I multiply the tops, divide by the bottoms, and I get 502,300 joules. Let's check for your understanding. Can you convert between units of measurement? The next part of the lesson today is talking about temperature. Um, to measure temperature, what we're doing in chemistry is, is we're looking at it um, from a, measuring the average kinetic energy. Okay, So if we look at, at these two different diagrams here, all particles in a solid vibrate even when they're cold. And at higher temperatures, they vibrate faster and take up more room or expand. But the particles themselves are still the same size. And so that can kind of help you explain um, some of the concepts here that we're going to be talking about. If we look at our different temperature scales, we have Kelvin temperature scale here on the left. We have the Celsius temperature scale in the middle. And we have a Fahrenheit temperature scale on the right. Again, in science class, we very we pretty much never use this this Fahrenheit scale even in like the medical field and so on we typically use um, the Celsius temperature scale um, in our scale though look at the common common factors here so water freezes on the Fahrenheit side 32 degrees uh, Celsius 0 degrees and Kelvin 273 water boils on the Fahrenheit scale 212 degrees uh, and the Celsius scale 100 degrees and on the Kelvin scale, 373. So again, we kind of have some random intervals here. It's a 180 degree interval between freezing and boiling on the Fahrenheit scale. Celsius is much easier because it's just based off of, again, a 100 degree interval. Same thing with our Kelvin temperature scale. Okay. Um, so freezing point of water is 0 degrees Celsius. Boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius. Below 0 degrees Celsius is negative. Okay. These are things that you need to memorize based on the Celsius scale. We will use Celsius all the time in lab. When we do gas laws, uh, we will have to be converting to, to Kelvin. Again, um, that gives you kind of a, a highlights that center one there. On the Kelvin side, the Kelvin scale, water freezes at 273 Kelvin and boils at 373 Kelvin. The theoretical point of absolute zero is when all molecular motion stops. And so on the Kelvin temperature scale, and this is why it's important for our gas law unit, is that there is no negative numbers in the Kelvin temperature scale. Celsius you can have below zero, Kelvin you cannot. Okay, so the divisions are the same as Celsius, but they've shifted the scale so that it accounts for their, the fact that the theoretical point of absolute zero is when all molecular motion stops. So they've shifted the scale so it incorporates that theory. Okay. Um, so again, there's our Kelvin temperature scale, and you can kind of see some of those um, highlighted points there with the freezing and the boiling point. To convert between these temperature scales, it's very simple. Uh, so the example here, what's the temperature in Celsius of an object that's 150 degrees Kelvin? So our formula for solving this is Kelvin is equal to our Celsius temperature plus 273. So we're just going to plug in what we know from our, from our equation here. So we know from our problem that we have 150 Kelvin. So we plug that in here is equal to degrees Celsius plus 273. Now we just solve for Celsius. So just like in math class, you're going to subtract 273 from both sides. We want to isolate our variable, which is Celsius. So we take 150 Kelvin minus 273. Those cancel and we get negative 123 degrees Celsius. That's our answer. Okay, so 150 Kelvin is equal to 123 Celsius. It's as simple as that.
Let's check for your understanding. Can you convert between Celsius and Kelvin temperature? At the end of this lesson here, you should be able to convert between units of measurement. You should also be able to convert between Celsius and Kelvin temperature scales.